Um, yes, hello again. This is now Tarot Lesson 24. And I've got three things today. I think it's three. So, um, this is a continuation. An, an idea that I had after the last one. Remember the haiku? Where we've got the moon in the water. Right, broken and broken again. Still, I can't remember. It is there. And I mentioned brief in passing last time that maybe this is what the tarot gives us. So you can, broken and broken again can mean that you, you're going through life and you've got a certain situation and it's not working, it doesn't work or it's broken or it's failed. And you can keep working with it or trying to fix it or deal with um an unfortunate situation or but if if we can remember that behind the the moon's broken and broken again because of the reflection in the water and changes in the water but nevertheless the moon is there and it's complete and it's and it's whole so there can be or maybe the point of the haiku is there is always an underlying order or orderliness or underlying wholeness even though we are dealing with the broken bits and pieces of life our own life or the lives of other people but it's the point i think that there is a wholeness behind everything so how how do we how do we learn to see the wholeness and maybe this is what the tarot gives us so we ask a question and we get an answer and there's the three of coins reversed that is telling us about the underlying truth rather than the outer appearance and that can be why the tarot is hard to read because it's the underlying truth but at the same time that's why the tarot is so valuable because it's the underlying truth and not I'll not letting us be distracted by the appearance i mean if you think of it we 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 hear what we hear but dogs can hear things that we can't hear right you get a dog whistle and the dog perks up its ears because it can hear things that we can't so yes we can do great things with sight and listening and and touch uh, taste and touch and smell but there's an awful lot going on that's outside what we would normally consider as being real or the world. And it may be that that's what the tarot gives us access to, the underlying truth or the, the invisible other stuff that's happening. So how do, you, how do you open doors in your mind to be able to see that? And I wrote down this and I'm going to show you something that may seem ridiculous but it's well if you can't get to sleep at night try this okay this father and mother what's the difference between them they both get t-h-e-r the difference between father and the mother is f-a and the difference between f-a and m-o and we notice that the father is all straight lines and mother has got straight lines and a circle so the difference between the father and the mother is the father's straight. And if you think about it, a sword is straight. A baton is straight. Whereas a coin representing money and values and a cup, if you look at a cup from the top down, that's what it looks like. So the, mother, the father is all straight lines, whatever that might mean. And you'll have odd ideas at different times about what that means. Maybe the father is about, okay, we're here, we're going, to, we're going to go there, let's just go. So there's a directness maybe about the father. Um, whereas with the mother, the mother can be direct because there are straight lines. But the mother is also sensitive and understands that things come and things go round and round or things go in circles. And maybe that what we do with a circle is instead of going round and round, right? Like going through the same experience over and over and over and over and over again, like people do, 
Instead of that, maybe what we do is we begin to go around in a spiral. So yes, we're going through the same kind of thing, but we're raising our level or we're looking at it from a, from a higher point of view or from a different angle. And because we're looking at it from a different angle, we're seeing things, seeing something different. Not just seeing it differently, but we're actually seeing something different because we're, we've got an overview maybe or we've got a wider understanding. So I was going to look at the number, the number, the letter F, right? So it looks like upward motion, or maybe it's downward motion, but if you look at it, and this is what I'm suggesting you play with when it's two in the morning and you can't sleep, or when it's two in the afternoon and you're wanting to do something interesting. So it, you start at the bottom. As you go up, you get to a certain point where there's a, a possibility of expanding, where you can go further. And then you get to a dead end, so you've got to come, or you can come back. And if you go a little bit higher, then you find there's even more possibility because you can go further at the top of the straight line. So that's sort of, as you go up, you get more. Whereas the letter A, I need to turn this. With A, you're starting at the bottom, but as you go up, as you go higher, you get more focused, you get more narrow. And so maybe with, with the letter A, you, you begin in two places at the same time. And as you go higher, or as you, as you become more focused, um, or that, that's the point about the letter A, to become more focused. So we've got here a straight line going up and it expands, but here we've got straight lines, but they're becoming not more expansive, but more focused. And this this can may not mean that much right now, but what is what's going to happen is if you play with this idea and do the other letters of the alphabet as well, and just see what you come up with. It'll mean that whenever, or the next time you look at, for instance, the Knight of Swords, you're going to be able to do more with it. And you're going to see, you're going to notice things you didn't notice because it's a bit like this kind of exercise will open doors in your mind. It'll open doors so that you see more or more comes through or you're able to look differently or look in a more complete way because the doors are open. You're not looking at a, a, a wall anymore. You're looking at a wall with an opening. And if you actually look at it, what's that card look like? The shape of it is like a door. So maybe each card represents a door that we can walk through or that we can open or we can close. And then mother. So M-O. Look at the shape of the M. You go up, you're forced down. You go up, you're forced down. So it's as if the mother keeps you grounded, keeps, you, the father is up here, you know, let's go and let's conquer the world. The mother is, okay, you want to conquer the world, okay, but you have to be realistic as well. You want to conquer the world, you have to be realistic as well. And then the O, a circle. So if you play with, with shapes of letters, you'll find that when you come back to look at a tarot card, you automatically know more. And it's not, which brings me to the next point, it's not intuition. Because somebody asked, I can't remember who it was, um, uh, and wanted to know, do you use a, a, a structured reading or spread, or do you just do storytelling kind of thing? And so I am going to suggest that you don't do the storytelling. Because let's say somebody is there, okay, this is you. So what do you want to know? Or tell me about me, right? So I pick a card and I start talking about the six of Baton's reverse. But you, you know, with, with if you're writing an article or writing, the, there were journalistic questions where you figure out who, what, where, when, why, how. And so I look at the six of Baton's and is this about you? Is it about your future? Is it about your past? 
Is it about somebody you know? Is it a conversation you had with somebody yesterday about failure or not being victorious and successful? Is it about you being a member of a team and you don't get along with the other people? Or is it because the leader of the team isn't capable? Who knows? And I think that's a problem with doing unstructured readings that you you don't re you don't know what you're talking about. I don't. I mean, I mean that sounds a bit harsh, but it's like it's not clear what the card relates to, so you don't have a context. So maybe it's general, generally good, but I I question the value of not not knowing. And the other thing is that the the reader. Remember, I mentioned a while ago that we're all different and we've got our own strengths and weaknesses. We've also got different, or we've all got a particular moon position. The moon is the mental personality in a horoscope. And it shows how you think. And so some, depending on what part of the zodiac your moon is in when you were born, then you think a certain way. So some people think quickly, other people just cannot think quickly. It's because of the way they're born or where the moon was when they were born. But some people are automatically optimistic and positive. Other people are pessimistic. My wife happens to have the moon at 23 degrees of Pisces at the near the end of the zodiac. And she's sort of, <coughs> excuse me, she's sort of programmed to, to imagine the worst. That's her default position. This happened, oh no, what can go wrong? So a couple of days ago, we have a garden, a little garden at the back of the house. She looked out the back window and she saw a rabbit eating grass. Instead of thinking, oh, there's a rabbit eating grass, she imagined we were going to be invaded by rabbits who were going to eat all the grass and destroy everything. So she took a simple thing and built it up in, instantly built it up into this catastrophe. And that's how she thinks about everything. I mean, not all the time and not in every, sometimes she's right. Right, but not always. And this, I think, is a problem with not having a structure where you pick a card at random and you think, okay, um, here we've got the two of coins reversed. What is it, what is it talking about? What, is, what does it have to do with? What question is it dealing with? Whereas if you have an idea, even a simple three-card spread like past, present, and future, right? So... Well, let's see. That's the past. So this is the past. This is telling us about something that already happened in the past. So it may be still important in the present or coming up in the future, but at least it's something we know what we're talking about. This is an experience you had in the past. So maybe you were short of money because it's coins, which is money. Or maybe you wanted to be, to have a comfortable situation in a nice environment and it was denied or it wasn't allowed or you thought you were going to find it and you didn't but that's something about the past and this for instance is the present the full so it's time for a new beginning so you, you tried that didn't work what are you going to do now move on do something different do something new understand what you really need and go go for it Maybe you need to take a bit of a chance, take a risk, but it'll work because the card is upright. Whereas if you've fully been upside down, you're thinking about doing something drastic, don't. Or be very, very careful if you do something that's outrageously risky because it's probably not going to work or you'll make bad decisions about who to be involved with or what to do. Then we need to look at the third card for the future to know how it's going to work out. So with the Knight of Batons uh, for the future, then, okay, you make bad decisions, but somebody will, a knight in shining armor is going to come along and rescue you. So, but at the same, if the knight is up, if the fool is upright, then it's, it's telling a different kind of story. But at least we know what's going on. This is the past. And because we've got coins here, no coins here, and no coins here, then it's as if the past is finished and you can leave it behind. Whereas if we had coins in the future, um, if I can find one, uh, there's a, if we had that in the future, then okay, we're getting a connection between what you've been through and what's going to come up in the future. 
And so this is unfinished. You think that you've finished it because it's a nine and it's at the end of the, si the, the, the suit, sort of. But it's going to come back again. Only you'll handle it better this time because the card is upright. Here you made mistakes. You, you chose badly. Now in the future, you'll think more carefully, maybe because you've got a good idea about what direction you really want to go in. The major trump of the fool representing future a, a desired, important, spiritually satisfying, emotionally satisfying destination or journey. And because the two is here is upright, then you're going to do better in the future. Whereas if I had picked um, the, nine of, the nine of coin, I don't know what this is about. Maybe it's now, maybe it was yesterday, maybe it's coming up in the future. I don't know. I can guess, and maybe I'll be right. But this is the problem with intuition, or what people call intuition. A lot of it is just guesswork. And I, I, I am not a great believer in guesswork, mainly because it can be wrong. Whereas I think if we take our lead from the picture and the card, it's not going to be wrong. Okay, that was today. Um, so today is, I forget, Monday, so Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'll be back on Thursday with number 25. So once again, thanks for watching. Oh, I better just do what I normally do. Full stop at the end of the sentence. All done. I can put this away, ready for the next time. So again, thanks for watching. If your comments or questions, let me know. And... Um, Bye-bye.